check out this cool experiment, okay? I have four different glasses with four different kinds of liquids, mystery liquids over here, <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, insert these wires and see if the bulb glows. Well, let's do this. First of all, the bulb glows so we can actually see that this thing works. And now if I insert it in the first one, nothing happens. I insert it in the second one, which is some kind of a mixture, nothing happens. I insert in the third one, which is a clear liquid, we get a glow, and in the fourth one, we get an even bigger glow. What's going on? Why didn't it glow over here and it glow over here? What can we conclude from this? Let's find out. Now, since we're dealing with mixtures, let's quickly recap them. Mixtures can be of two kinds. We have homogeneous mixtures, where two or more substances are mixed uniformly throughout at a molecular level. And we also call them solutions. For example, when you put food color in water, the food color becomes a solute and gets dissolved in water. You can also have salt solutions and sugar solution. And you can also have solutions in solids and gases. But in this video, we're concerned with dissolving stuff in water. So let's stick to water. And of course, when two or more substances are mixed in such a way that they do not uniformly get distributed at a molecular level, we call them heterogeneous mixtures. For example, when you put uh, oil in water, you can see that you can clearly see the boundary over here. Here, it's a heterogeneous mixture. If you put sand, the sand will settle down, it forms a heterogeneous mixture. And remember, what allows the solute particles to be dissolved uniformly in water? Well, it's the water's magnet-like abilities, which allows it to stick to itself, which is called cohesion, and to stick to other substances, which we call adhesion. This allows solute particles to stick to water molecules and get dissolved throughout the entire thing uniformly. But now let's look at the solution a little bit more carefully. What really happens when you put salt in water, for example? So when you add salt to water, we say the salt gets dissolved. What really happens over here is that the salt particles actually break into tiny charged particles. Can you see that? Positive and negative particles. This is the reason why when I put wires and you know hook it up to a battery and a bulb, it conducts electricity and the bulb glows because you have charges over here. Such solutions which contain charged particles, we give a name to them, we call them electrolytes. And you probably have heard of this term before. Yes, these are the same electrolytes that we drink because we are, our body also runs on electricity. And when we are running low on electrolytes, it causes cramps and stuff. So salt solution is an example of electrolyte solution. But are all solutions electrolytes? Well, let's see. If you were to put sugar in water, then again, it'll dissolve, meaning the sugar particles will separate from each other, but they will not be charged, which means sugar solution are non-electrolytes. And if you were to put those wires inside over here, connected to a bulb and a battery, the bulb will not glow because there are no charges to conduct electricity. So not all solutions are electrolyte solutions. Okay, here's another example. What if you were to put sand in water? Why don't you pause the video and think about whether you think this will be an electrolyte solution or not? All right, well, this is not a solution at all because sand does not even dissolve in water. So you get a heterogeneous mixture. So clearly we don't even have a solution. There will be no charges and you will have, you know, these are non-electrolytes. So we can have electrolyte solution, we can have non-electrolyte solution, and this is not a solution at all. But what if you were to pour vinegar in water? You know why I'm considering vinegar? Because vinegar partially breaks apart into charged particles. Not all of them, but partially. So you do get some electrolytes. So if you were to pass, you know, if you were to put those same wires over here, it will conduct electricity, but not as much as this one would. And so the bulb would glow a little faint. So what should we call this? Well, we call this weak electrolytes. So now we can go back to our experiment and see if we're dealing with electrolytes or not. So here we go. So in the first case, so, okay, we first test whether the bulb works or not, okay? And in the first case, what do we notice? We get nothing. That means this is not an electrolyte. And it's indeed not an electrolyte because what I took over here was pure water. Pure water is not an electrolyte because there are no charges over here. Now, ideally, after each test, we should rinse the electrodes with distilled water so that when we dip it in the next beaker, there is no contamination. But I was so excited over here, I completely forgot about that. Okay, in the second one, which is some kind of a mixture, you can see, again, we got nothing, which means even this is a non-electrolyte. And you know what exactly this is? This is actually chalk powder that I put in water. It's not a solution. You can clearly see it's a heterogeneous mixture, actually. So you can clearly see the chalk settled down. So again, there are no electrolytes. So this is just chalk over here. 
In third one, we actually do see the world glowing, but it's a little fainter than what we will get in the fourth one. We saw that earlier. So this means we are dealing with electrolytes, but because it's fainter compared to this one, we can conclude that these are weak electrolytes. And it is because I actually put vinegar over here. So it partially breaks into charged particles. And then in the final case, we get a much stronger glow over here. In fact, you can compare it with the one that we got on, from the vinegar and you can see that this glow is much stronger. So there's a much more electricity being passed over here, which means we can conclude that this must be a strong electrolyte. And it is indeed strong electrolyte because I just put table salt in this one. So in summary, water can dissolve a lot of substances to form a solution. This is because of water's magnet-like properties that allows it to stick to itself and also attract other particles. Now, certain substances, when you put them in water, they completely dissociate, uh, they completely break apart into charged particles. We call them strong electrolytes, and they conduct electricity very strongly. Certain other particles will partially dissociate. Not all of them will break apart into charged particles. We call them weak electrolytes. In some cases, they separate, but not into charged particles. So they form a solution, but this is not an electrolyte solution. And of course, there are cases in which they don't dissolve at all. Like when you put sand in water, they don't form a solution at all. Um, they just form a heterogeneous mixture. These are also non-electrolytes.